down the line who wins it. I'm going to go Foy. I'm, I'm going to go with the hype. Uh, I'm going to go with Derek Beaumont and his rat Lamborghinis <laughs> and Mike Latham telling the stories in the bars afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. I think it's that close. I won't go. I'll just say safe. It's just to go for it. Sense for me, Tan. Well, they are in the tunnel. They are ready to come out to what is going to be quite some atmosphere. So we will take you to our commentary team of Kevin Brown, John Keir, and first, our rugby league correspondent, Dave Woods. Well, there's no need to dress up this occasion, is there? Two sets of passionate fans, history and newness, interwoven, and out they step into a cauldron. It is a Challenge Cup semi-final, and it's one we're going to relish this afternoon. Lee have restyled as the Leopards. They're looking to make a leap of faith here today. But St. Helens, no pussycats, kings of the Super League jungle for so many years. This is a clash of styles, a clash of recent history. We've got Andy Burnham here as well, the Mayor of Manchester. I think Steve Rotherham, the Mayor of Liverpool's in there as well. I know that Andy's a big fan of Lee, so he'll be cheering on one side here today. Well, those Lee players have been terrific this year. They really have. Second in the Super League table, newly promoted, newly promoted teams are supposed to go straight back down, but they have been second in the table. They've won so many games in a breathtaking style. But this is a St. Helens team that is full of champions. It's the We Are Rugby League Together moment here, 13 seconds when everybody's encouraged to make some noise clap their hands a moment of anti-discrimination and rugby league unity adrian lamb it was the challenge cup that brought him over here as a player 20 odd years ago his dream of playing in a cup final well now he's got a chance of coaching in a cup final this is the way they are lining up today the absence of centre Ricky Lutelli will be felt by Lee, but in Lachlan Lamb, Edwin Impape, John Asiata, they have three of Super League's outstanding players in 2023. Each, and indeed all of them, might have a starring role here today. St. Helens, much made of the absence of James Reby and Mark Percival. Both big misses, but Tommy Makinson is back. T. Ritson returning on the wing as well the lad from barrow and there's plenty of pressure on hooker joey looks who could be playing his last game for st helens today according to the transfer speculation from australia the free this afternoon is chris kendall or until jack smith running the touches and marcus griffiths is our video referee well, when Lee were promoted this year, their aspiration was to compete. Now, they aim to conquer, but they're up against the championship side today. St. Helens represent the ultimate challenge. Where is this one going? Kevin Brown and John Keir alongside. Well, it's a day of opportunity, isn't it? A day of opportunity for the Lee Leopard side, but one for St. Helens as well to really get this season back on track because they've been a bit stop start up to now but they can really nail a performance and get the season on track and for the leopards well it's 50 years since the last one this competition that's what opportunity presents itself today and i think you can clearly see dave at the start of this game leah going after joey lussick in the middle of the field there's no walker on the bench and i think the start of this game is going to be a war through the middle of the field and they're going to go after joey and he's not had many minutes this year has he joey lussick he's not he's a fantastic player but he normally comes on and he gives energy. He's not a player that plays big minutes. James Roby is, is like few that is very consistent in the middle. Here comes T. Ritson, the tie flyer. On loan this year from the mighty Barrow in the championship. And he gets his first taste of semi-final action. Tommy Makinson will see plenty of this this afternoon of Makinson doing those hard yards from inside his own 30 metres. And that was a good carry to get his side rolling forward. Well, it's the menu that St. Helens have used, isn't it? Long, uh, all the time, they receive the kick. The, the strong ball carries from the three quarters get in there. Then the big men, such as Knowles and Wormsley, are on the back of that. There is some muscle in both these sides. I think Lee 
thought there might have been a knock on there, but there wasn't. Wormsley now will pick up and carry on. It's a great shot. Last play in this set, Lussick goes to Lomax. Lomax with a kick high. Was he taken late? No, he wasn't. It's um, O'Brien who goes up and captures, but it's a good end for St. Helens to that set. It's a great end, it's a great set, and it's a perfect position to get stuck into Josh Charnley. There's a different intensity to this game and the start of this game already from the, the Super League contest we've seen, and I think whoever starts the brightest and can keep hold of the ball, you know, will definitely go a long way to winning the game. We were talking with Alex Wormsley on the podcast this week, weren't we? And he was saying that game against Catalan, the opening 12 minutes there wasn't a stoppage. I tell you, if we go 12 minutes at this pace without a stoppage, there'll be a few breathing heavily. The will, and, a, and I think a few in the middle are already breathing heavily. Big Alex Wormsley being one of them. It's been a ferocious start. Reynolds with the kick. Good covering and good catch by Ritson. Three, four, St. Helens forwards with their hands on their hips and walking back slowly. But as expected, Dave, it's, it's, this is an arm wrestle, it's a, a modern parlance, but you'd say St. Helens are just edging it because, as we saw Ritson there, he fielded the ball 30 metres from his own line. When Lee fielded the ball, they were within, within their own 10 metres. Here's Lussick, Lomax. And I'm out there from uh, Asiata to try and cut him down, and he does make the title, does John Asiata. One of those outstanding Lee players this season, Wormsley, just carrying it in. The heavy-duty prop, last play. It's going to be Dodd, who puts it up in the air. O'Brien and keeps his eye on the job. And a safe pair of hands. And that's the reward from dominating the field position, like John said. They get to put an attacking kick in and put them under pressure once again. So if they can stay clean and be disciplined, then they'll be the first ones to have a crack at the lee line. Come on, Joey. Ollie Holmes on that far side. For Lee. Lamb picking up out of dummy half and Lee just trying to advance as far downfield as possible here. It's a very tight defensive line though for St. Helens, which is allowing them to get numbers in the tackle and have great line speed. It's an Asiata carry. Here's Reynolds with a kick. Well, they got to him, but not before he got that ball away. Wellsby with a catch and looking for Makinson to make. A telling return, oh, Conrad Harrells dropped it, the referee says it went backwards. That was a lucky moment for Saints. Yeah, they get away with one on there, and I was just about to say, this isn't working for the Lee Leopards, they'll probably start thinking about moving the ball and using that dangerous left edge to generate some territory the next time they get the ball, but that was, you know, a dodge bullet there by St. Helens. That was Bell, who always has plenty of energy. Lussick down that right-hand side again. Wellsby backs away from one challenge, inside for Lomax. Mulhern was looking for him, but Lomax has stepped past. There's an intensity and energy, though, to this Saints team. They've started really well. Wellsby, they got some numbers over here. Mekinson has to reach for that, though, which rather stymied any possible advancement. They're on their last play. Another kick from Dodd. Not the cleanest of passes. Bit of pressure on him as well. O'Brien does well. well, Bell just came flying at him, but O'Brien catches it safely. Yeah, that was legal, he actually went for the ball, he jumped over and, and O'Brien, yeah, nice fullback player, kept his feet on the floor, caught the ball, but once again, I think this is the fourth time already in the game, you know, they've started here, I'm sure Leah look to start moving this ball now, Woods. They'll have to do, because T. Ritz and uh, Kev, he, he was defending within the 20 metre dash on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the field. All right, Cap. Only a couple of plays to go. Lee with Hughes with a kick. Just a little early. Not sure well, if that was the best option because Wellsby's caught it safely enough and he'll plant St. Helens back inside the Lee half here. And that's the difference in big game teams and teams who are new to big games. Saints are happy to stay with the process. Lee went from that process with a back row of kicking the ball on tackle four. I think that's pure frustration. Jack Hughes is a very experienced smart player and I think it was just a brain explosion there he's put his team under a fair bit of um, pressure now Mickinson dumped to the ground important that he was back for Saints this week in the absence of Mark Percival who has been goal kicking in Mickinson's absence Lomax almost through 
20 metres out, St Helens with tackles in the bag. Dobner puts it back to Wellesby. Wellesby with a step inside. Hughes just flaps an arm at him, but a cover there from Lee's point of view. O'Brien with a tackle. Last play. Dobner slides it in, but taken by Hardacre. Lee survived. But there'll be plenty more of that to come. Yeah, that was a good set, but that was great defensive. That's the full-back in Zach Hardacre in the defensive line there, and he's, he's probably saved Jack Hughes' blushes because it was a poor kick, then he missed the tackle, but they survive. Yeah, I think they need to start moving the ball, Kieran. They're just not penetrating this St. Helens defence at all. No, it's very, very dominant, and the rook speed is very much in St. Helens' favour. Asiata, he's a man who can work a bit of magic with ball in hand, and there you see it with the offload and keeps his side going forward. Just pinching an extra five yards, but making St. Helens work a little harder. And that was Mulhern who offloaded, and Asiata to Charnley, and Charnley cuts inside, and the offload pattern continues. Chamberlain, though, can only drop on the ball. The kick is under pressure here, though, from a sideline. Last play. Oh, Lamb's got time to have a look there. He's put it steeplingly high, but why? No, it's not. It's bounced in the field of play, and Charlie's underneath it. Well, he was allowed to chase that. Well, he was allowed a lot of time to kick the ball. I think he yeah. actually put it up on his left foot, and I think everyone, including Jack Wellsby, thought the ball was going to go out, and it just spirals back in. And Josh Charlie, the only one on the field who, who gives it half a chance and chases the ball, nearly makes something of it. It was great play by Lee, they upset the, the tempo of the Saints' defence by the offloads, but you've also got to be mindful that when you finish your set, you've got to give your kickers half a chance of getting a good kick away. Wormsley. On the rampage. Lussick. Matatia bouncing out of one. Causing problems, Three. crawling another Three. yard or two. Three. Joey Lussex in a dummy half and inside for Lomax and Lomax to Knowles. Four. Out now. And going low. Here's Lussex again. This is Matty Lees who's certainly got plenty of explosion Three. down the middle, but Saints again find themselves on the last. It's Dodd who puts it high. O'Brien's been given the task, and he's been up to that task. That's about the third or fourth high ball. He's, he's looked very assured. Yeah, you can see what's on the tip sheet for St. Helens County, where they're going to turn this ball over, and it's going to be in the pockets of the field constantly, and they're happy to be in that grind and stay in that grind and wear the other team down. There's Briscoe, Tom Briscoe, has a love affair with Wembley finals. Seven tries in total in Wembley finals, nobody else has scored more on that occasion down the years. And we are talking a lot of years. That's a good carry from Mulhern. Lee again on the last, find themselves still inside their own half, so Mulhern will chip it forward. Wellsby's advanced to catch it on the fall, and here comes Ritson with the return. The one thing that separates the sides clearly at the minute is the kicking game. Lewis Dodd has got it on a string, and you know, we've seen time and time again, he's put it in in them corners. At the minute, Lam and Reynolds both just miss firing with the kicks and giving them an easy out of their own half. Lussick. Makinson again. They miss him when he's not involved, Tony Makinson, don't they? Because of that kind of work. I mean, his finishing is extraordinary, but that kind of work as well. He makes all these play plays better as well off the fact that he gets a, a real quick play of the ball. Lomax, a class act in the middle of the park, puts it back on the inside for Matautia. Saints in familiar territory, 20 out, but on the last. So Lomax puts a little chip in, which Wellsby's on the chase of, but again, it's a great take by O'Brien. Just all the traffic's going his way. Well, all the traffic's going right to left at the minute, isn't it, uh, from our viewpoint, where St. Helens really are dominating field position, but... Uh, Credit to Lee, they're hanging in there, and they will grow into the game. More and more the game goes on. If the scoreline stays like this, they'll grow into the game. And we are in the 12th minute. We've not had a stoppage yet, have we? No, and this, is, this has been all almost one-sided in terms of territory. You know, the 20 metres down there has not been touched by Lee, so, you know, even though it is nil-nil, I think they need a penalty or something just to let them, let them breathe a little bit and get out their own half. And Moni takes it in. Last play here. Pape 
to Lamb. Striking it well off that left foot and just making Wellsby cover a little more ground than he's been used to. But back they come. Makinson. Oh, the footwork is on. He started really well, hasn't he, Tommy Makinson? And do you think Kev, there might be advice? Oh, there's a, a knock on. Was it? Yeah. Yes, it is. It was hand on arm, not hand on ball. Lomax is complaining. But that is maybe the break that Lee need. That's what they needed. They needed something like that because it was so patient and it was like copy and paste from Saints. That's a gamble, don't get you yeah. wrong. Yeah. He, he could have been pinged and I'm not sure he squared there. John Asiata's reached round and, and Johnny Lomax is furious. He's, um, no, because that momentum will shift sizably now and we've seen before the game and we've seen all season how good they are with the ball in these situations, the Lee Leopards. It was a gamble, though, Kev, as you rightly say, because uh, it could just have easily been St. Helens' penalty and defending your own half once a game, but scrum play is a great place to attack from. Here they go, Lamb's gone left, O'Brien's gone with him, but Hurrell was hunting there too. He's read that well, Conrad Hurrell. Well, he'll, put a, he'll put a note down there, Lachlan Lamb, that Conrad Hurrell's shooting out, expect yeah. the tunnel ball or the ball over the top. I was going to say, Conrad Hurrell is a man who's impressive in so many ways, but Lee will think that they can find an opening on that side. Yeah, he rolls the dice, shoots out the line a lot, I think sometimes because he is such a big man, he doesn't like defending on his heels. Ipape. Here's Asiata. O'Brien, now they've got a bit of win. Charlie's out there, but Saints just reset themselves and get across in number. But look where they are. Lee, first attacking opportunity, and Lamb. Ipape will pick and shoots to that left-hand side. A little grubber kick doesn't come off that time. It's an unbelievable pick-up, John, by the fullback. Outstanding, is it? But this is interesting now. Look how Lee have tightened their defensive line. Let's see now how St. Helens can clear the way from their own line. Oh, there's a penalty. That's by, by the way, that's scrummed down. 12 minutes and three seconds. That's how long we had before the first break in play. And here we have another. And what I will say for, for Lee is they look the freshest at the moment, even though, you know, they've been up against it, they look the freshest. Challenge Cup Extra, 4.30, so many ways of uh, watching that and getting in touch. Hashtag BBC RL. Big game, doubleheader tomorrow. Wigan against Leeds, the women's semi-final, 2.15 kick-off for that one. And then uh, followed by the men's second semi-final, Hulkingston Rovers against Wigan, 4.30 on air, 5 o'clock kickoff for that on BBC Two. And if you missed it earlier, what a game between St Helens and York Valkyrie. St Helens won it by a, a last-minute drop goal from Faye Gaskin. This is Matty Lees. And Faye Gaskin's story is incredible. She's come through such a terrible injury period. To kick that drop goal is an astonishing story for her. I'll tell you what, Kev, as well, what uh, St. Helens, they're turning the ball back, aren't they, against the grain a lot. And I think they're working over Asiata and Di Pape. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and Lusick and Dodd are both pointing at them. You can see the slow to get back, so it's definitely soaking the energy out the legs. Dodd here. Let's play, Knowles, Ritson puts the kick through, that's not a bad one, but Lamb is back there to sweep across and has it back for Lee, and his footwork just earns his side an extra five yards. Good half-back play there, just a mini pendulum there, just sweeping round the back when it went to the other side of the play, the ball, and he's got some feet, hasn't he, Lachlan Lamb, some dancing feet. So it was a good kick from the winger as well, wasn't it? It was, it was in a dangerous position, and, and it was smart play. But this is what they need to do more of, and I know it doesn't look perfect, but it's just moving the defence around, stopping them defending shoulder to shoulder, just giving the ball carriers a little bit more space. Move, Lewis! Go for it. See Pepe, Amone. Knowles swinging the arm. Amone's almost looking at the referee to say, what about that, sir? And they're targeting him when he has the ball as well now. Reynolds gets the kick away. Ritson with a catch, a little bit of space to work in there, but he slips as he tries to skirt through it. Yeah, it was a tired chase, that wasn't it, a tired chase, and that's one thing they've got to tidy up and either put the ball out of the on the sideline to just get a bit of ox in your lungs, or they've got to stress the chase has got to be better. It's Makinson again.
Lesser. Searching that blind side and Bell. With that uh, typical little skipping, hopping, running style of his. Back for Lomax. Comes to Wormsley and then on to Lees. And he's crushed between the shoulders of a couple of lead defenders. 20 out, one play to go in this set. Wellsby smuggles the ball away. I think Briscoe got a hand on that. It'll be a knockdown, a knock on, and more possession and position for St. Helens. And they manufactured a beautiful little short side play. First of all, it was Wellsby who got the little flick pass to Hopawati, and then it was Briscoe who did need to come in because Ritson had some space outside him. I actually think Zach Hardacre got to it as well. So important defence, but nice bit of variation on the last now from Saints. And this is an absolutely vital set to, for the Lee Leopards, it really is. Because there were, was some fatigue there in that middle unit, this is and big, Saints in a great position. Big play right from the start, isn't it? Lomax. And Hurrell just overstepped. Lomax has to take the tackle. Wormsley. They've set up base camp. Halfway up the mountain, can they reach the peak here with what's left in this set of plays and tackles? Dodd can't weave a way through. Lusick, Lusick, and a dummy half. He's claiming it. Referee's having a look. We're going to the video referee. But Joey Lusick is looking very confident on the field. He says try. Just check him in, take possession, please. We're going to have to hear from the video referee here, Marcus Griffiths. So it's tackle three, we've got an on-field decision of a try. Can we just check the grounding, please? So he gains possession of the ball, he has to get the ball to the line. He's still in possession, still in possession, and the ball is down. Thank you, I have a decision. Well, if it is his last game, what a way to be remembered. All the pressure was on his shoulders. Joey Lusset has just given his side a huge boost. Yeah, and if, if James Roby can do a lot of stuff Joey Lusset can, well, this is one thing that he is better than James Roby at scoring tries at close range. I played in a, in a team with Joey Lusick in it, and he did exactly the same in the semi-final against Warrington. He's, he sells the dummy so well, his feet, his body, his hips and everything. And then he just gets Tom Amone and Edwin Ipape just having a little breather and that's because of the weight of possession, the weight of territory and then the dams burst. It was a beautiful play but it was subtlety of mind from, from Joey Lussick. Yeah, I think you've got to credit St. Helens as a team there. They got their tactics right. They've worked over that middle channel and you could see there's some fatigue there when it's goal line defence. You've got to get off there and Makinson's there with the extras. And it's just been a big experience game yep. from all them players in Saints. That we mentioned how many big name players have, have been here before. Well, elite Leopards haven't been here before and you can clearly see, you know, they're just uh, determined to be patient, get through the sets and put Lee under pressure. Lee at the minute are the ones coming up with errors. It's a level up tonight, uh, this is. afternoon for Lee, isn't it? You know, they've been playing at a very high standard throughout the year. Yeah. But this intensity, Saints are used to playing at this intensity. Not week in, week out, but on these occasions, Lee well, have got to get used to it quickly. I, I was in agreement that I thought the Saints Catalan Super League game last week was a level up, but this is a step up from that, it really is. And Saints are going to earn in full marks at the minute for how they played that first quarter of the game. So, O'Brien. Looping the ball high in the air, and Ritson with a safe catch, and here comes Wormsley, leading the charge. And it's really important now that Lee forget that they've gone behind in this game and just get, you know, some foothold back into the contest in terms of territory. Bell springing into action. Lussick's gone over there. Knowles. Matty Lees. Move! We're here, we're here, go for it. Joey Lussick spinning it back again now. Dodd looking towards his left-hand side. 
Matatia with a pass to Ritson. Ritson with a chip over the top. Encouraged by his earlier kicking, no doubt. But that is dropped on by Reynolds. And he's done well. The referee said he went backwards. And O'Brien threatened to make the break. Sioni Matatia gets back to make the tackle. And that was a crucial tackle. It was smart play by Reynolds to firstly field the ball, but then get you know his arm free and put O'Brien away. And if he and he was away, if, if Matatia wasn't there to cover that tackle. Ipape. Here's Hardacre. Now it's with Lamb. Holmes trying to create some numbers on that left hand side, but they all get swallowed up by that triangle of Saints defenders. Well, what Zach Hardacre is doing here is ideal for Lee, and that's what the other three quarters of the Lee Leopards need to do. They need to, from Hardacre. They need to get in there, Dave, and, and take some work off these big forwards. There's a Monet. Well, they have got further downfield than they often have with ball in hand in this match so far, but they've run out of tackles. This will be the last play. Lamb's kick. Wellsby. Oh, he was in the field of play just. Immediately searching for Ritson, who's asked a question with that pass. Well, that could have gone horribly wrong for St. Helens. Didn't go great for T. Ritson. He's struggling in back play now. Yeah. Look at the bench, there's not a lot of back well, covers. There's ben, there? Davis. ben Davis. Yeah. yeah. Third. Move this way. Go Losick making some again. He's chasing the kick this time. That's this could be a 40 20. This is terrific. What a, what kick. a kick that is. What a kick. You talk about big plays in semi finals. That one is massive. And Lee need to get back because they're going to tap the ball as soon as that touch judge is ready. They'll tap the ball and there's still six or seven. Lee Leopard's not even close. Lee's hearts will be sinking into their boots. What a kick. That was an early kick in the, in the set. Tackle three. And there's the reward. That's great skill. Lee's defenders have had to sprint back into position. And now they're being asked to do even more work. Lusick to Dodd. Dodd will test out their resolve with his footwork. Lusick marches up. He's having a look what's available. Left and right, Warmsley. That's one. Go on, big fella, have a go. Well, he's very close. But he's held up. I think O'Brien's hand might have got underneath him, either he or Ipape. Still a fair bit of defending to do in this set, though, Dave. Lusick. Morgan Knowles. Lusick's there again. St. Helens with a chance to strike through Lusick once more. Sure, and he's held up. Let go. Let go. He's determined Let go. to switch it on today, Joey Lusick. Yes. Already scored one. Yeah. Got the 40 20 and the killer tries it again. There's an edge to his play, though, Kev, isn't there today? I mean, that try that, was, that, he, took, that he scored and then that kick has been last, sensational. Last play, last play, and it's coming left. And Matertia will be wrapped up and stopped. What the Lee take from that set of six in defence? Well, I think they can take a great deal of heart from it, but I think St. Tellers will be happy as well because they've built some more pressure, they've got through the set, and look where they turned the ball over, right in that pocket as well, 10 metres away from the, the goal line. And hey, they're off again with this high energy early tackle defence. And they're going wider, Lee, to try and just loosen the grip. But Saints are there in numbers. Can't underestimate what it's took from Lee. You know, you say, what did he get out of that? Well, Saints get a lot of energy out of the, the tanks of the Lee Leopards. Well, hurt. Running this though, he'd only just come on the field. James Bell, not square. I'm on it. Have they made an interchange yet, Lee? Because they, they famously don't make many interchanges, do they? In the first half. No, it's. Uh, I don't think anyone's made a change yet. Outside, give 10, give 10. I don't think it'd be long though. <laughs> 25 minutes, that's when you normally see some of the big men rolling out there. Makinson looking to return here. He's got Ritson there for company, but Hardacre's swallowed him up. He and Reynolds do the job. For a, for a middle unit forward, it must be great to play with Tommy Makinson because he, he just takes half your work away uh, early on. So uh, I think we're seeing an interchange now, weren't Dave? We have for St. Helens, haven't we? Parsi and Scarsbrook. McCarthy and Scarsbrook have both come on. This is Matatia, and they've got a penalty here. 
Offside, long way offside, according to the referee. Well, the dam's creaking now, I think. You know, the physiotherapist Chris Mellon's on the field, just trying to give them a little bit of energy. Tell them they just need to keep going and get through this tough patch. But it's going to get tougher because, like you say, passing McCarthy Scarsbrook will bring some energy. And they're up against some, you know, players who have been out there for 25, nearly 26 minutes. Just look at who's gone. It's Worms Wormsley and Morgan Knowles have gone, isn't it? Yep. And it looks as <laughs> this Lee team have not only had the same players out there, they've been virtually defending for the full 25 minutes and saying tell us about more possession. So it's a, it's a real difficult time for the Leopards. Here is McCarthy Scarsborough. Full of enthusiasm. You'd expect nothing less from the old timer. Dodd, Lomax, Mutatia grabbed up by Reynolds. And he has support from Hughes just to complete the tackle. St. Helens threatening again. Lomax, here's passing. Two plays to go. St. Helens poised. Five away. Dodd now back to Wellsby, to Lomax. All the way. What, what a tackle! tackle. What a tackle that was! Wow. You'd have put your money on Tony Atkins and scoring and cartwheeling. But just Charlie. Well, two wow. of the best. What a two of the very best. Yeah, two great wingmen there. And I'm with you, Woodsy. I was writing it down as a track on our piece of paper here. But my words, what a tackle. He's renowned for his attacking players, Charlie. But that's brilliant defensively. Look, at he drops off Hurdle, he goes on to his own man, which is the winger, and he puts him in the front seat of the sand. And it's actions like that that get you the, get you the shot, get you the, into the next round, and get you the trophy. I remember Bryson Goodwin doing it against Tommy Makinson in the final and knocking that ball out. People are, are actually training for that now because he is so good. You've got to find a way of knocking that ball out. Well, he was just checking the teeth were still there, wasn't he? He might have lost an extra couple of teeth. Fantastic, though, wasn't he? Yeah. That? that was fantastic wing play on both parts. Yeah. It's the kind of thing you just want to see again and again, that, isn't it? Brilliant stuff. And it remains 6-0 for St. Helens, and Tony Makinson's just wondering, how did I not score that? What was that that just hit me? Lamb. And now it's out to Charlie, and he gets to show what he can do with ball in hand. Well, that's the Lomax first time. Back. That's the first time he's picked off Conrad Urrell. Conrad Urrell was in the line again. He just went over the top. Holly Holmes. Had some exciting days with Castleford, didn't he, Holly Holmes? Here's Lamb. Reynolds. O'Brien. It came off the head of Ritson. It's play on. So Hardacre has to get there. Yeah, wasn't played at, came off his head, accidental, so Lee have lost ground. Good referee in that, exactly right. Last play, 30 from their own line, Lee fans are booing, but it was the right decision, Lambs closed down by Bell, kicks away to Makinson. And here comes Sonic. He just never slows down at any point in the game, he's 100 mile an hour. Ben Nakabuwa has come on for Lee, by the way. I think it's Asiata who's gone off, that's one to say. Yeah, I think so. I think both Asiata, because Matty Davis has come on too, and yeah. the Mourne. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's one to St. Helens, isn't it? For how they came prepared to play, that's working over left. the middle. That's a good offload from Hopawati, and Wellsby's coming at pace. Move! Robert. No. 11 minutes of the half remaining, and it feels like the previous 29, Lee, have just been working harder and harder. Hurl. Oh, Bell. Lomax. McCarthy Scarsbrook feigns to pass, but he Move. wants the challenge of the run. And they're on the last. Lusick to Lomax. Wellsby has to stop, goes the other way. There was a hint of an obstruction had he carried on. The kick pings off legs, it's dropped on, but it's a turnover. And more importantly, there's a problem in back play for Jack Wellsby who kicked the ball. He's gone down clutching at the back of his neck, I think. I'll tell you, you've got to admire the effort, though, and, and the desire of this Lee Leopard side, haven't you? Because they've been under the cosh virtually incessantly. 
and they keep coming up. Apart from that one try from Lusick, the, the close-range try, they've come up with answers time after time after time, and, and I'm with you, Kev. The only question is, is how energy-draining is this for that group of players? Well, we saw it uh, previously in this season that I think Saints were up by a couple of scores against Lee. I think it was 12-0, and they came back and, and won that game, so they have been in into this sort of territory and deep water before, and they'll be drawing on that and saying, look, if we can get through this patch, we have done it before. I've had to stop the game, though, so we've got to do one of four things. It's either a green card, hit a burn a sub, or use a sub. I think this is where possibly the green card may be used. The referee's talking to the physio Nathan Mills about Jack Wellsby. Green card. Yeah, green card. Yeah, two minutes. Uh, just to explain, yeah, two minutes on the sidelines. If you need treatment on the field, if the referee just thinks well, if he, you could have gone off and had that, then if, he's, if he's got to stop play, Dave. Yeah. So he's two minutes. So St. Helens are down to 12 men two for the next two minutes. Yep. And well, tough has on that as well because he's just been whacked by Edwin Apape after he kicked the ball. I think <laughs> it should have probably been a penalty to St. Helens. There's got to be some sort of uh, rational, I think, applied to that because it's still black and white for me at the minute. Well, Tommy Makers and finds himself at full back yeah. now for the next couple of minutes. Ipape. Out of dummy half. It's that kind of. Line breaking run out of Dummy Half that Lee desperately require. Reynolds spins it left to Lamb. Lamb on tackle three. Lee still deep inside their own half. Hanging on here. Lee really are. Matt Davis. Here's Ipape. Mulhern. Carried his side just about. Inside enemy territory, Reynolds. It's a bit of a wobble on that ball. Makinson, no doubts with his catch. And then comes searching. Here's Ritson. Lachlan Lambs after him. So is Chamberlain. Stand with. Go on. Perrell. It's a heck of a game, this, Two. isn't it? You just can't take your, your eyes off it, and the energy having to be expended by both teams is phenomenal. The bomb has been in play for a, a ridiculous amount of time. Kev, you're most recent to this kind of action. What are you feeling now if you're out there, having played in this intensity? Well, for, for me, you, you, you sort of begging with your front rowers to keep going you know it's hard but everyone's in fatigue and it's whoever can push through this pain the most comes out the other side with a success but this is the period now where everyone's got lactic acid the the blood's going around the body and it's really difficult and you've got to stay composed and get your skill right like oh. we see the kick there perfect o'brien took a gamble and it's not paid off no. And St. Helens have forced the drop out. O'Brien was convinced it was going out of play. It was a real difficult decision for uh, for O'Brien to make there because if he catches it, he may well get battled into touch. But what he did, he, he gambled on it going over the sideline or going dead. And look who's chasing Matty Lee, a prop forward. Fantastic two chase. minutes into his stint. Yeah, a fantastic chase. And the reward, Kev, for that extra effort is another set of six attacking. O'Brien with a drop, Ritson traps, and here comes Parsi, just who they wanted to see coming running at them. In full flight. Five tackles to go for St. Helens. McCarthy Scarsbrook, what a huge seven and a half minutes of a half remaining. Jack! Jack Hughes, come on! Skipping. Don't go early. Third. Move Here's Lusick lining things up behind. Dodd's got his instructions. McCarthy Scarsbrook knows that his job is just that. Platform lay. Lusick to Dodd. Dodd inside to Parsi. Lee's defence recovering. Parsi with the offload. Oh, and Ipape leaps up. And oh, he's off his head with Ipape, but couldn't quite get in full flight before they hunt him down. Brilliant, and that's probably the first time Saints have lacked a little bit of patience. They look really threatening, and Parsi gets his arm free and just can't hold the, the urge to throw it away. Now we see a, a set restart, so 
That's another one, another tick in the box for Lee, and I think they'll be the happiest at the moment at this scoreline. I don't know about walking off at half time. I think somebody might need to send a bus on, and they can get a lift off at half time. This Lee side. They've done so much hard work in defence. St Helens, the champion team, the pedigree side, know how to play semi-finals, and they're playing it well. But here's O'Brien. Holmes, Lachlan Lamb, Reynolds offering it back now for Ben Nakabuwa. But they're on the last. There's Reynolds with a chip back. Wellsby was going one way, had to go the other, but recovers his poise very well and offloads to Lomax and inside to Makinson. St. Helens had no right to make that a dangerous situation, but momentarily they did. That's what they, they've all got pace, they've all got power and strength, and they can promote the ball too. So if you don't get your kick and chase right, they'll punish you. Here's Harold. Third, move on the Hold, hold, go. Matt Davis, no square. The new man on the field, George Delaney. He's an athletic young player. Lasek will kick. I don't think he was behind the 40. The Brian's not taking any chances this time. It's still a good kick, though. Charnley. Yeah, the fatigue just setting in now to the Lee. Tom Amorne has been brought back on the field. Shows the value of him for the Lee Leopards. Here's Briscoe. And Dave, you asked... Adrian Lamb's famous for not overusing interchange in the first half. He's had to use three already. Hardacre throwing off Lusick, not throwing off Lomax, and nearly throwing the ball away. Recovered by Chamberlain. And that's a good resetting of where they needed to be. The Pape to Lamb. Lamb seen the gap down the middle and went here in for it, and he's bounced up out of between two defenders, and he's still going, and here comes Reynolds. And St. Helens having to work well there, Matatia across to make the tackle. This is Lamb. Here's O'Brien. Hughes stepping back on the inside. Didn't see the value of trying to make something for Briscoe there. Too tight. Last play, O'Brien. Reynolds. Little run and a chip and a chase. Oh, and it's bouncing awkwardly. Ritson's got there. And he's done well. Well, yeah, he was, he was rolling the dice there, Reynolds, because it was a one-man chase, and I think if that bounces up the right way for Ritz, and it could be a foot race. But every time Lachlan Lamb gets the ball, you can see his quality coming into this game. You know, he's, the, he's the main guy. I think the more that he can get hold of the ball and have it with a few fresh players around him, he can be a real danger today. And taking the line on Kev as well, because it, it, his pace is phenomenal, isn't it? And he's got great footwork. Conrad Hurrell barreling forward. Classy up off his knees. Got a kick here through Dodd. Now they could try to get across there. McLean and Charlie will watch this. Another great kick. Charlie looking to return. He's gone at the young fella. George Delaney, but Delaney's held his ground. Some reinforcements join him and Lee Stark from deep. Lamb. Well, Hurrell and, and. Now they've got a bit of width. Chamberlain. Hurrell and Makinson, Dave, didn't even attempt to get in the line. I think Hurrell was fatigued, but Tommy Makinson has clearly yeah. got a knock. Yeah. Oh, oh, Briscoe drops it. Picked up by Parsi. Back to Lussick. St. Helens quick. Lomax. Now it's Makinson. Forward, Forward pass. pass. Forward pass. Forward pass. Will that count as advantage or will they go back for the first error? I think it'll be the first one, Kev, won't it? But uh, a blatant forward pass there. The Saints were looking to take advantage of the, the Lee error. No, I think it'll be Saints head and feed. I don't know if the referee has indicated that yet. Yeah, he has. This is a real 
big ending to the set. Yeah. Two, two minutes left. They've just got to defend Let's this go. because you know Saints are feeling the the pinch as well. Like we mentioned Again. before, you know, the physio still on with Makington and Hurrell still bent forward. over. This makes a huge difference to the mood in the dressing room at half time. This next couple of minutes. St. Helens looking to ram home their advantage. They've been the better team throughout the game. But it's only a six-point advantage. If they can double that, they will feel that they're in control. No penalties. No penalties. Lusick to Dodd. McCarthy Scarsbrook for company has gone back to Wellsby and now Bell and Bell comes springing in. The ball steal, I think. Yeah. Ball steal. Now here's a philosophical moment. Kick for goal. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Kicked over. Not philosophical then. No, 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 no. <laughs> Daft question is what you're saying. I think, yeah, I think not it is. a semi-final. <laughs> it's a semi-final. There's less than a minute left. It's been an absolute war. Going in at six or eight is a big difference. And that, that that is straight in front of the referee. We've We've said how good Tom Amone has been all year, but that was that was a brain explosion. Well, it's been a great half, hasn't it? And it's not supposed to be easy to get to Wembley in a Champions Cup final. And I can tell you, all the players who've been out on that uh, playing field today, they'll know how difficult it is. It's been absolutely very physical, energy draining and high quality. Well, we were watching the game before, John, and we, we was with a women's game and how physical that was and, and some of the, you know, the contacts, but it's been exactly the same in yep. this game. It's been so physical. Ben. That's the view very nearly that Tommy Makinson has of the target. You get a, a sense of the angle there, should be kickable. Oh, he's put it wide, he's put it wide. Well, in cup ties, when two points matter, how important might that be? And Lee, hang on, 6-0 at half time. And Tommy Makinson's still just holding that knee, he's, he's not happy about it, and, you know, maybe it's a, not an excuse, but a bit of a reason. Well, but who of these two men's sides will be enjoying a Wembley experience? 6-0 at half time as Lee re-enter. And by the way, just a quick aside, a wonderful moment for Welsh rugby league. John Keir, of course, alongside us, the uh, coach of the Welsh national team, but a lovely moment for Welsh rugby league this week. Three rugby league and Welsh legends have had statue, statues unveiled down in Cardiff. Billy Boston, Clive Sullivan and Gus Risman. A long, long time overdue, but I know uh, sporting royalty were out in numbers in Cardiff for that big moment. So well done to Gareth Keir and uh, all the others involved in making that statue happen. Yeah, three, it's another Gareth, Gareth O'Brien, who's going to get us underway here. Three greats of the game, Dave, weren't they? Three absolute greats of the game. Well, a measure of their greatness is Billy Boston and uh, Gus Risman both have their statues at Wembley as well, don't they? So, you know, Billy was down there for it as well, and the family of Gus and Clive. Second half about to get underway. What a story could unfurl in this next 40 minutes. St. Helens, the side supreme, the four times back to back grand final winners, the World Club Challenge winners who are so used to this occasion. But the lead is only by six, and Lee, for all they've been outboxed and sometimes on the ropes, are still in their fighting. Yeah, and I think Adrian Lamb will be. You know, looking at ways to you know, unsettle this rhythm that they've been throwing at Lee all game, the St. Helens team. And when they get the ball, like we've said a couple of times, if they can gather some momentum and actually give Lockle and Lamb and his teammates a little bit of time and space, then they can threaten the St. side. Lusick. Give ten. Here's Dodd give ten. Give ten. with that searching kick and O'Brien's across. And Charnley is an eager carrier of the ball. Looking to burst a three-man St. Helens wall. Up quickly to Lamb. Chamberlain. Damien Johnson, what was what was being said in the dressing rooms at half-time? Well, I can tell you that Paul Wellens was extremely happy with the energy and the performance of St. Helens in the first half. They're battered and bruised, though. McCarthy Scarsbrook is out of the game with a quad injury. Morgan Knowles may reappear, but he's got a knee knock heavily strapped up. In terms of uh, Lee, well, Adam Lamb says they've uh, been under the pump in the first half, but proud of the effort 
Uh, just needs to get some field position in the second half. Well, he might have got his wish there, Damien, yeah. because it's a penalty here for Lee. First one for Lee, I believe, as well. So it's 3-1 uh, the penalty count now. And it's uh, it's manner from heaven, isn't it, this, uh, this high tackle? Because it just buys field position there from... Uh, for the century, so they're starting this set 40 metres away from the, the Saints line. Two St. Helens heavy trucks missing in this second half. What, what kind of a change might we see in the dynamic because of that? Well, the dynamics change straight away because we're going to see attack on the front foot, and this is where Lee are very, very dangerous. From set restarts, the, the renowned for throwing some real special players through Lamb and O'Brien and Reynolds. So, them big men in the middle will have to be uh, quick witted as well to defend. Here's Reynolds. Just offering it off to Amane, Tom Amane, who is up to the 20. Move! Ipape has jogged over there into position. Didn't see much of this in the first half. Lee with tackles on the opponent's line. Lamb's worked his magic. And Oli Holmes will finish it off. Lachlan Lamb found the key. Holmes kicked it all down. Lee have a try in front of their adoring fans. And what a try. What a try. And it's all come from that field position, from that penalty. Derek Bowman there with his leopard print coat on celebrates. Ollie Holmes crossing for a very, very important try. And once again, the tap restart from Lee, and this will have been rehearsed on the training ground time after time, but it's Lockle and Lamb there. That, that right side defence is very aggressive. They've come up in front of the ball, and Lockle and Lamb times it brilliantly. And Oli Holmes gets round the back and he's got the pace to get through Wellesby. What a great try. And straight after he passes this ball, he knows Oli Holmes is going through to score. He turns round and points what I think is his dad. I think at half-time they'd have had some video out on Conrad Hurrell saying, look, he's getting in front of the line. Don't try and go round him, try and go through him. And that opened up perfect. You know, we said that they're still in this game at 6-0. And you mentioned at half-time, how big would that miss kick be? So... If Ben Reynolds can put this over, after 44 minutes, the, the teams will be level, and, and that, territory-wise, just doesn't tell the right picture. Well, those are semi-final situations. The neutrals love tight games, full of big moments. Heartbreak for one side, soul lifters for the other. Lee looking to make it level again. Ben Reynolds... All those behind the sticks are keeping quiet. They're going to try and suck this ball over, and they will raise their arms in the air because Lee are level. Six points apiece at the start of this second half. Well, what credit to... I mean, that was a pressure kick, wasn't it, for Ben Reynolds? And it absolutely nailed it, and it's just lifted the atmosphere. That stand is packed behind the post to our left. It's lifted the atmosphere there. And what a return for Ollie Holmes with a tremendous try. And what a kick from Reynolds. And this game is alive. He's been remarkable this year, Ben Reynolds. I think he's one of the most improved. He was out before the game, kicking, you know, for 10, 15 minutes before anyone else was out. And you can see it's really paying off. And what will be interesting as well is when Adrian Lamb now sees uh, to reintroduce John Asiata because that could be a, an absolutely crucial part of this game. Two, well, Lee fans, listen to them. Nakabua driving in, finding his front, wanting to get up quickly. Saints in the wrestle, Parsi trying to keep him down. Ipape spins out a wall. Now it's on to Holmes. Lomax makes a grab. Hurrell makes a grab. Penalty. He's pointing at Parsi. Well, the momentum has completely swung. You can hear by the chance from the Lee crowd that they're expectant again. And because of the leaving players on the floor and the Saints' defensive line isn't yet set, they've given two penalties away straight away. Again, a big set, 40 metres away from the Saints' line. This is Holmes. Edward Ipapi marches into Dummy Hart. I expect him to t attack this left edge once again. I, I think they'll, Conrad Two, will have second three, guesses now what to do. Will he go up or will he stay back? Here they come. Amane just uh, taking the ball off his shoulder. And Pape carries it on. 
Lambs, Lambs make the signal, but they're going right. They're calling the bluff. Omone, or maybe they're just delaying it by a play. Epape, now they come left. Lambs there again, quick hands, but great read by Makinson. But he's given the ball back to Lee, who have another set of six now. Six more tackles, Chamberlain out and dashing. Well, the tempo's just upped no end from the Leopards. Ipape, dodging left, really pushes. They were up celebrating, but he's sure. Tackle, Lomax. Chamberlain waits, Saints on the ropes here. Back with Reynolds. Oh, it's a poor pass. Briscoe, well, in the end, he had to get down on it because had he not done, a poor he might have seized an opportunity. Reynolds again. Still a couple of plays to go. Here we go, attack at the left. Here it comes. Nakabu White. So far. Keeps it alive. Picked up by Davis. Runs back into that same cluster. But they've got Lamb standing left again. Here he comes. Lamb puts the kick back down the middle. And down goes the big fella. Passing to rescue it for Saints. You know, Dave, I think Adrian Lamb has reminded the, the lead team what they've been doing well previously. Offloading, scooting from dummy half with the puppy and really hammering this left side. And my word, what a difference it's made. And play with energy, they found energy. They needed to be brave in the first half to hang on. They have their reward, but St. Helens will come back. St. Helens will have a few punches to land themselves, no doubt about that. Last play, and only 20 from their own line, so big kick required here from Lomax. It's like a complete role reversal from the yeah. first half, where Lee were kicking the ball, and Tommy Makinson's bringing the ball back where Tom Briscoe is. Complete flip. Messi on the floor. Referee says, just get back. There we Six inches further back and play the ball from there. Charlie. Two. Move. Go ahead. Tangle himself from that. Ipape. Reynolds. Just do not drop him in. Here's Hughes. Third. Move you. Hold. Hold. Go for it. Ipape picks up. Left to Nakabuwai, just heading down the throat of those St. Helens defenders. Ipape dances right, Reynolds puts the kick on, they were advancing, it's over kicked, in fact it's out of play on the full, that's a mistake. It was a great idea, yeah. just the execution, just didn't marry up with that. Yeah, the left wing uh, for St. Helens, Rich knee was up, so there's certainly space behind him. And Wellsby was well across the field, but uh, okay. just the execution, okay, just yard or two outs. He's had a couple of moments in the last five minutes or so, Ben Reynolds, where his skills just let him down. He just needs to get back to the basics, running hard, you know, and taking the line on, because that's when he is good. He's making some. These two sides have met each other eight times in the Super League era. Lee have only beaten St. Helens twice down the years. And if you aggregate their scores, St. Helens win on average 35 points to 14. That has been Saints' domination in this fixture over the last 20 odd years or so. But it's all evened up nicely today. St. Helens looking to counter punch. This is Dodd. Passing. One up, one down. Lussick, last play. Here's Lomax. Puts it back to Wellsby, arrives at speed, and Makinson slipping over. Easier tackle this time for Charlie. Yeah, but it, it was an easy tackle because of the position, and the, he held his nerve, he didn't go in. You know, the fifth tackle, he didn't drop back. The positional player, what a contest it is between two of Super League's best, I believe, that we've ever seen in Makinson and Charlie. And at the minute, it's a stalemate out there. It is, and I, th I think Charlie's really demonstrating his, his defensive capabilities as well. He's been outstanding. It's remarkable as well, isn't it? Just Charlie has uh, talked about how he nearly retired last year. He wasn't enjoying his rugby league, but 
Boy, is he enjoying it this year. Here's Hardacre. He's back to his best, isn't he? Try scoring, he's at the top of the charts. But the work he does in the backfield too to get his team on the front foot. I think it's 22 Dodge, Super League tries, isn't it? Him and Johnston at Catalan, neck and neck at the top of the Super League tree. Here's O'Brien, Lomax. Brilliant. Good tackle. Brilliant, Lomax. Yeah, he's got a couple of humdiggers, hasn't he, this half already? One on his line and one there to prevent uh, O'Brien. Nellers on the field in that dummy half position. With Pape having gone off. Asiata's back, back on there. as well, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, he's lost it. Referee has a look, says play on, Chamberlain picks it up, and Leah back in position, Chamberlain's not tackled, still going, offloads to Mella, Mella spins away, has a step, Wellsby tries to get back to make that tackle, and does, but look where Lee are now, six plays to go, Reynolds, Hughes, flicks it out the back door, almost gives it away, Briscoe rescues, Hardacre, Parsi. There's a big bumper in there. Mella. On the cusp of the big time for many years. Joe Mella. Asiata tries to dance through. Mella's there again. And Monet's pouring the ground. It goes back to him to Lambda. Lambda throws it back to O'Brien. O'Brien with the dummy. Tries to trick his way through. Lomax with the tackle. Chamberlain spins it back. Lamb. Reached by Asiata, here comes Mella. Oh, well done from Delaney, drags him down. Last breathtaking play of this set. Reynolds out to Lamb, Lamb puts the kick in, the chase is on! Oh, it's been missed by everybody! Has it been put down by Hanaka? Has he got there in time? We're going to the big screen! There's lots of limbs in celebration. Five. Bobby needs to get that cessation. Soft signal try. Checking ground in, please. So it's tackle five. Can we go to the kick first, please? So outside, offside. So we can pause it on the foot. So everybody to the right of the kicker is onside. So we can go here. OK, so now we need to identify who touches the ball. So this is a contest for the ball. The shoulder to shoulder, that is a contest for the ball. No, uh, on that angle, nobody touches it, so we can have... So we've got another angle just to make sure Briscoe does not touch it whatsoever. So that is a genuine contest for the ball. That is a genuine contest. And now we're onto the ground in by Hardacre. If we can just go back to the previous one to confirm and just pause it on the ground in. He's in possession. And the ball is on the ground, thank you. I have a decision. Wait for this, wait for this, a collective roar. They know what's coming, they're loving what's coming. And Leah coming, Hardacre's trying, Derek's up celebrating. And Lee have the lead, implausibly. They do have the lead, and in terms of, you know, sets of six, attacking sets of six, that was an absolute masterclass. Finished with a beautiful weighty kick by for me, arguably the best player in this competition at the moment, Lachlan Lamb. He was involved in everything, they were threatening up the middle, they threatened on the left edge, and then he disappeared to the right, and he brought the opposition's defence up and waited a perfect kick. But the hustle that Briscoe and Hardacre shown, and that desperation, you know, that character and resilience is really shining through now for the Lee Leopards. We talk about the left edge, well, Lamb appeared on the right edge, and that's all credit to it. That's one thing I like to see, where a half-back isn't locked into one side. It can roam both ways, and obviously the quality of the kick and, and, the, and the finish. You know, let's credit Hardacre. That was a difficult one to finish in that space, and he's nailed it. 
Reynolds. Huge, huge kick. Here he comes. Ooh. No, just drops wide. But Lee have the lead, and they believe. Yeah, and in response to that, now they're going to bring the big boppers back on Knowles and Warmsley and try and turn that momentum that they had in this first half that's disappeared drastically in the first 14 minutes of the second half. There'll be no panic from St Helens, will there? Time off. But this is quality, is it, from Lamb? Absolute, because he was under pressure, inside pressure, to put that kick in. And uh, as you say, Kim, sometimes it's the it's the want or the will rather than the skill, and Briscoe and Hardacre demonstrated that in bucket loads. At least turn that kick into a, a, a magnificent kick. If he doesn't chase that, it looks like it's a poor one, and it just rolls dead. What a game, what a semi-final. Charnley. The same, the Saints won't panic here, will they? They've got so much big game experience. I mean, Penrith pushed them all the way. Well, and they kept a... their nerve, they'll keep their nerve here. Yeah, they'll keep their nerve, and there's been a response in a positive way. How, how physical, you know, Matty Lees and Warms, they've been in these opening tackles. You know, they'll not panic, they'll know how to get through this game. And get back the momentum that they need. But all the, all, the, all of a sudden, sorry, Dave, all of a sudden, Lee have had the possession, haven't they? They've dominated the possession and they've made full use of it. They've been absolutely clinical when they've had some good ball attack. How far was Lamb able to run there before kicking the, the ball downfield? Makinson there finds himself facing a wall of leopard spots. As well, speak. Oh, not square. And now Ritson. You're good now, Bird. Move. Ten meters. Wait. Listen. Wait. Wait. Go. You're off. You're good now. You step back. Play on. Play on. Three. Up it. Still three. As well to get the ball away, and Alex Wormsley goes rumbling forward again here. Good carry. Good Move. carry. Oh. Oh. Go for it. Bell. Back with Morgan Knowles, hey! and now Saints find themselves on the last. Dodd, plenty of numbers in chase, and up goes. Great catch, was, was that Briscoe? Yes, it yeah. was. Great Fantastic. catch. I think the next score is so crucial in terms of this contest. You know, if Saints can get themselves back. Oh, it'd be massive for them, but they just look like they're, they're being out enthused a little bit in certain areas. To remind you the context, Lee haven't been to Wembley, haven't won at Wembley since 1971, 52 years ago. By contrast, St Helens are chasing their 14th Challenge Cup crowd in the summer era. No side has been as good as St Helens in the Challenge Cup. They've won it eight times since the switch to Super League. Nobody's come close to that. But it is the new kids on the block who are challenging the old Rolling Stones at the moment. Can St Helens get themselves back on track here? Well, Saints need one of their big players to step up here. I think Lomax has stepped up defensively, he's been brilliant. But they just need one of their key players just to step up, whether it's a Wellsby, whether it's a Lomax, whether it's a Dodd, just to step up and just crack this game open. Wormsley and Lussett now picks it up and Lomax on the inside and Wellsby, they're trying to do things at pace here, St Helens, but Lee are hanging on. It was the story of the first half and Wellsby's hurt here. Lomax, Hurrell, throws it away desperately, Makinson keeps it alive. Now, Saints can go left. Oh, that was forward, was it? Held on to by Matautia, puts the kick into that in-goal area. Too big, too big. Tap back from the 20, leads, uh, sorry, Lee, get a seven tackle restart. And Saints probably a little bit guilty of losing patience there. Yeah. It, it was a scruffy end of play, John. As a coach, you want that patience and that, you know, you just want to feed the ball in and put the pressure on, don't you? It was much un unsaid Tellens-like, wasn't it? You know, and what it's done, it's given Lee a seven tackle set, already 20 metres 
from their own uh, line. And in the first half, they were masters of just turning the ball over in the corners and just turning the screw. And you don't need to win the game now, minute 60. You need to be in front at minute 80 and, and demonstrate that patience. Seattle shuffling it along. Brilliant defence. Gathered in. It's more like Saints. Asiata again. Bird, move, Mate! Hold here, hold here. Go for Here's Mello. Ramone. Kept alive again, Holmes. Carefully does it from Ollie Holmes. Wait, Morgan. Wait. Go for Reynolds. Offloaded. Back to Mello. Here's Amona. This is Reynolds. Running it wide. O'Brien. Hardacre. Hardacre. Shuffled through one tackle. Two more up to him quickly. And, and that's Lee, isn't it, Dave? Offloads and support and ball movement. Last play. Reynolds puts it high. It's taken, I think. No, not fair. Oh. It's a penalty. He was taken late, and the referee has given Lee a penalty in a very kickable position. I'm not going to ask you the philosophical question this time. He's going to kick for goal now, isn't he? He is, and you know, if he hits him in the head, which he does, he could, um, he could get worse from a Tautier too. It's definitely a penalty, though, isn't it? That's late. Well, it's definitely That's a penalty. Late, but... I think he'll be looking to stay on the field. Yeah. Whether it's yellow or red, I'm not sure, but... Now, whether that was frustration or what, I don't know, but... Uh... It could certainly prove very costly. Well, I think at the moment, Saints, we're, we're not questioning uh, the game management or anything because they are such a good team. But subconsciously, this Lee team will know that they're for the taking. They're not as dominant as they have been in previous years. They've already beat them this year, and the game is going very similar to how the game went at the previous contest when Lee won that game. Well, he's calling Siona Matatia out here. OK, it's late and there's a lot of force in it. It's ten minutes in the centre. Oh, ten minutes in the centre. It's very car. late, though. Siona Matatia. It's very late. Ten minutes. And there's only 20 minutes left in the game, so Lee will have a one-man advantage for half of the time left to play here. Yeah, they're probably going to get another two points off the back of that, too, so... Um, yeah, Metauti, what he does consistently well is kick pressure. He's just got it wrong a little bit there, John. He's just gone too wide, yeah. a little bit too late. And it's a, it's a clear one for the referee. It is. It is. It's a pretty simple decision for him to make. And uh, If you're wondering who the man in the uh, leopard skin jacket is, by the way, if you missed our build-up, Derek Beaumont, who's the Lee owner, who's been responsible for rebranding what were the Lee Centurions with their red and white hoops into the leopards with his leopard skin outfit. And he's backed the enterprise with a bit of money. There's some star players out there and a very unfashionable club is becoming in 2023 very fashionable. Are they going to Wembley? Well, this moment might go some way towards deciding that. Oh, yeah, the contact's fine, yeah. Conrad! Kick one, this one so far today, Ben Reynolds' record. Johnny Lomax getting a few running repairs behind the sticks while this happens, and he has drilled that one. Whoa, he hit that one. I tell you what, the goalkeeper might have gone the right way and he would have kept that one out, would he? He smashed it between the sticks. Six points for Saints, 12 for Lee. What a game, what a game. You've got to admire the, the sort of courage and determination of the, the Leopards. First half, they were absolutely under the caution. It, it, they flipped it half-time, they flipped it. Credit the coach and credit the players, they really have. Everyone spoke about their attack all year and how good it is, but that's something that you just can't put a value on, that resilience not to fall away under so much pressure. But this is a huge eight and a half minutes now. The attack already looks dangerous. With that numerical advantage they've got, Lachlan Lamb, the man on the ball now, I expect him to get even more deadly. 
And it's also a test of St. Helens, isn't it? This, they've been a, a dominant side, a great side in the Super League era. And now six points down, 20 minutes to play. 12 men for 10 of the 20 minutes. This is a real test. Whoever gets through this, boy, have they earned it. Mohan smashing forward. Testing time for the new coach. Paul Willens, St. Helens guru this year. Four, move! Mate, do not go ill, eh? Go for Mella, back on the inside, a footwork there from Asiata. Five, move! Ten metres! Wait, wait, go five. Here's Lamb. A little general out there with a kick downfield, the ex Sydney Roosters player. Play on, play on, play on. Making some, brings it back. And Lamb amongst those who are first to the chase in stopping Makinson in his tracks. Ritson. Lussick going left. And Ipape still to come back as well. Yeah, he'll be back out for the last 10 minutes, no doubt about it. Wormsley, Knowles. Two England internationals in harness, but Molly Holmes was down there to make the tackle. Wormsley comes again, skittled in the air. He's hit his knee there. Seattle was like a bowling ball there. And Alex is hurt. Can you play the ball? Go five. Lomax. Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. O'Brien underneath. Bell's swift on the chase, but O'Brien's got past his efforts. He stood up to everything they've thrown at him today, Gareth O'Brien, such an experienced player. And another great acquisition that Lee Leppards have brought in. I think the back three have been exceptional with the high ball, Kev. I mean, Briscoe has been tested, and, and so has Charnley, and they've, they've really swept everything up. But Wormsley is struggling, no doubt about that, he's struggling. Hardacre. Getting after him now, they're pointing him out, they can sense that. He's hanging in there. Oh, Mulhern spins it away. Oh, it got a touch from Holmes. It knock was a knock on. on. Yeah. yeah, just a sneaky little touch. St. Helens will get the ball back. And boy, do they need that ball back. Yeah, and they and they got a reward there from the effort. Uh, Morgan Knowles. He flew out of the line and hit Mulhern, and it almost panicked Mulhern into a bit of an off wall. And that's, a crew, that's what the big teams do, when they need a yeah. moment, they come up with a moment, and often it's aggression and physicality. Let's go, ten seconds! Let's go! The clock countdown, if, again, you're not quite sure, five minutes left, but St. Helens still only have 12 men on the field. Matatia in the sim bin. Out! This is where, uh, oh my goodness. Well, at that moment, they only had 11 players able to play because Worms has been treated. We've got the sim bin over there, so uh, that's why they looked scarce of players when it was a scrum. Morgan Knowles takes it forward. St. Helens have been fantastic down the years. They have the spirit. They have the know-how. They have the ability to come fighting back here. It's a sick... It's a big effort, this, from Alex Wormsley. Okay. He is injured and he's been strapped up and he's put his hand up for his teammates. He's running on one leg, gets up and plays it. Lussick, Lomax. And here's Harold. But round they come for Lee defenders. Squeezing him in, putting him down. Last play, St. Helens. Back to Lomax. Lomax up to the line, he's put far too much okay. on that. Far too offside. much. Offside, offside Lee. He did take the play. Penalty for he's St. Helens. Offside, go back inside. Jack Hughes, well offside. Well, there's a let off because that was a mistake, wasn't it, from Johnny Lomax? Joey! Yeah, it was a poor kick, he's got away yeah. with one there. The Jack, you've got to get on that line. Now it. Passes back on, though, they've got Wormsley and Patsy out there go, now. Joey. And obviously going to run this tap, so let's see what happens this set. What about this set? What about this set? St. Helens 
might be in a position to get themselves back level here. Dodd, Wellsby, hello, Conrad Hello hurrying, and he's over. He puts an arm up in celebration. He thinks he's scored. The referee is going to need a second opinion. He's had a word with his touch judge. No, no try. try, no try, the soft Just signal. The diamond, so it's there's going to be needed to be clear evidence here. Let's hear from our video referee, Marcus Griffiths. So it's tackle one, and we're grounded, please. So we just need a view of the ball to see if it ever gets to the ground. So it's one, the live call is no try. So at this point, the ball is up. The ball is up. Charlie is underneath the ball. We lose the ball at that point. And the ball always appears to be high. So because we lose the ball, we can't see anything from that angle. Have you got another angle for us? OK, so on this angle... So we're just seeing if the ball remains up. We know Charlie is under the ball, and we've not got a view of the ball there. We've got, we can see it there at the top of the picture, but nothing. OK, this is a third angle. No view of the ball. Are they all, are they all the angles we've got? That's all the angles we've got, so we're going to stick with the live decision of a no try. That's two. I think Conrad was having us on. He put his yeah. arm up in celebration, hoping it might have convinced somebody, but it hasn't. And up. Saints are denied, two, but they Conrad still have possession here. Great they defensive still represent effort. A threat. But a great defensive effort, wasn't it? Charlie, Charlie Lamb all in there. That's the desperation that the Challenge Cup brings out in you. Saints come again. Wellsby. Warmsley, what a brave effort. Move. Put down 10 away. Lussick, Parsi, he's just going to batter at that lead all. But it remains intact. Move, Edwin. How many plays? Two plays left. Lussick, Lussick trying to do what he did in the first half. Show, Move. but no go. Not this time. One play to go. Spun back to Lomax. Here's Wellsby, Wellsby with a kick, John Lee's back there and scoops it out of play. Another brave saving effort. Drop out underneath the sticks, Saints will come again. Yeah, and this is the third set of six that they're going to have to defend on the line. And it's just Charlie again, everything they're throwing at this right edge from St Helens. He's come up with the answers. He came up with a try-saving tackle on Conrad Earl previously. He came up with a try-saving tackle in the first half and then he defended that kick. Remarkable defensive game so far for Josh Chandler. This is epic. Absolutely epic. And we don't know which of these two sides are going to Wembley. As Parsi drives it in. Two minutes, less than two minutes. Or Vila Matautia, Sione Matautia rather. There's a, there's a throwback. Sione Matautia being off the field. Wormsley. Up. Ten's good. Ten's good. And Lussick Three. comes right Two. to Dodd. Two. Dodd to Lomax. Two. Here's Bell. <laughs> Bell's going nowhere. Move. But Saints are pitched right in. Eight straight away. Hurl to the right hand side. Making Sam trying to wriggle his way over. No doubts this time. The referee's right there. Held up. You just love the desperation, don't you? Absolutely love it. And this is the essence of a knockout competition, is it? Where the jeopardy is so high, and that's what it brings out in players. The very, very best. Lomax. Here's Wormsley. Plenty of St Woo! Helens fans in here will have seen their side win at Wembley. In years gone by, very few from Lee will have had that honour. But Lee have just been given a massive lift-up because Johnny Lomax... Johnny Lomax, of all players, has dropped the ball. Yeah, Mr Consistent, normally the coolest man on the field, he just took his eyes off the ball, he was seeing the onrushing defence come towards him, and it slips through his grasp, and, and now with only less than ten minutes remaining, the clock definitely becomes a factor. If Lee can get to the other end of the field and drop a goal, you know, this game could be over. What's Adrian Lamb thinking right now? Chris Chester. Just to Adrian's right there as well. I think he's what thinking, what, what can I do to influence the outcome? And uh, 
you know, obviously, Matauti is uh, returning. And that ten minutes was a good ten minutes for Saints, really. Yes, it was. The dominated possession, they asked questions. It's brought them back in the game, Kev. Yeah, I think Adrian Lamb will just be thinking, let's get through this set and try and get some energy back in our legs because he knows that there's going to be another wave of possession from Saints to try and open them up. Amari goes down. Here's a Papi. Back on the scene. Mulhern crashed into. The ball comes free. It went backwards. Reynolds picks up. Oh, Mulhern. He felt that. He's been cracked. Yeah. Well, Brian with a kick. John, John, John. Play on your good now. You're good. Whitson catches well. Surrender. A reminder also, it's, it's timely that we could have golden point extra time here. St. Helens score a try and kick the goal. And if it's all level at 80 minutes, then it's golden point extra time. Well, I don't know how they'll summon any energy levels for that. Because it's been absolutely... The, the work rate and intensity has been immense. Lussick picking up, having a dash, having a dart. Asiata and Moni have got him covered. Here's Bell. Back to Wellsby. Knowles comes on at pace and goes through some tiring limbs. And here's Lomax and Harbaker gets back to save the line. But one play to go. Makinson spins it out. Left it goes to Parsi. Parsi back to Dodd. Dodd slides it in. O'Brien's there. Wow. Well, we've seen one man, Charlie, saving the line. Now we've seen another. Well, that was Harbaker. even better, John. Yeah. That, that was the best tackle of the game, Get and it, it needed to be. It looked for all the world. We said that Johnny Lomax was the man who normally comes up with something, and it looked like he was going to do that again. But Zach Hardacre, and he's carrying the ball again now. Mentioned energy, and he's just come up with a couple of magical minutes here. I mean, it, the strength involved there to stop the momentum was sensational. And slow the player the ball yeah. down, so it gave his teammates chance to get back and defend the next player. If Lee win this, it's about their desperation in defence that's done it. Absolutely. Some great attack, but my word, they've been so desperate in every defensive situation. Taken on the fall by Wellsby. Gives it the advantage of an extra few yards to run it back, and Saints start their set again inside the Lee half. Six and a half minutes and counting. Two, move win! Still winnable. Still Hold. losable Hold. by either Go side. Through. Fire the cannon and out comes Makinson. Lusick to Dodd. Three. Three. Back it goes Three. to Lomax. Three. Looking to bring it back Three. on the inside again. Three. Popped up for Dodd. Dodd with a skip. Puts the foot Three. down. Four. Lee are ready. Stand. Lusick. Now it's Lomax. Drifting across, loose pass, picked up by Knowles on the half volley. That's five tackles. They've got one left here now. Wellsby, they're going to go. The big man through the middle, Parsi. Didn't get there, lost the ball. Asiata's has put his body on the line there, and he's, and he's hit yeah. Parsi exactly the same as he's hit Wormsley a couple of times. His tackle technique, it's almost been reckless for his own safety. Let's go. What a tackle, OK. Oh, he needed, he needed what a to tackle. Be. My word. Wow. Wow. That looks like a bad injury as well, and he's done it with his head, and there's no malice in that. That is just sheer will to win. It is. Body on the line for the cause. Unbelievable. Well, it's been a great, great game, hasn't it? I mean, you said it before, Dave, in, in commentary. Whoever gets to win, they've, they've earned this. Yeah. They have absolutely earned this. There'll be plenty of sore bodies tomorrow, Let's believe you me. We could make an highlight reel just of the, uh, reel of the try saving tackles. Charlie Knowles gets in his face. Have Lee got the temperament we asked? They've answered. Whatever happens next, you can't quiz that element of their approach. But St. Helens have still got it in them to come again.
There's Lomax with a bruising hit on Amone. Oh, what they give for a penalty or anything now, because they just can't get out of their own 35. Coming in from Matoti. It's virtually attack v defence, isn't it? With us a bit of respite when they've got the ball, matching Move. it out. Derek Beaumont cannot stand it, can he? <laughs> His nerves will be on edge. Lachlan Lamb kicks downfield. And here comes a Makinson, head down and off he goes. And Mulhern's the man who gets in his way. Well, I think they've got two go. sets of six to defend the way to Wembley, the Leopards. Yeah. 12 tackles, Kev, 12 tackles and you're in the final. That's two of them. Lussick. Lussick going left, Wormsley just keeps Ball. going. Queuing up again here. Back to Bell. Bell to Wellsby. Wellsby steps into what he perceived was a gap. He's offloaded well. It's now Dodd. Dodd on that left hand side. But got a hold off by Hardacre. This is the sixth play in the set. Lomax's chip. It's close to the uprights, it bounces, Charlie has it. Well, what's but he's tackled doing? in that ingle area. Drop out underneath the sticks. I was going to say that's a poor kick. Yeah, he just needs to catch that there. He does. He's given them eight. They've got another 12 tackles now with that, but I think it was unsighted with the crossbar. Yeah. And uh, once again, Charlie back there, tidying up. I thought that was a really clever kick because he, he brought the crossbar yeah, into play, yeah, didn't he? Could have hit it. Yeah. Either way, it was a distraction. Well, this is the set now as we see passing going off. The last roll of the dice. Two minutes and 35 seconds. Oh. Lee oh. defending for their Wembley lives. Oh. Oh. St. Helens have got the position. Oh! oh. Alex oh. Worms, oh. Edward oh. Pape. There's about six stones difference between those two. two. Now it comes to Wellsby. Two. Back to Lomax. Lomax shows the dummy and he's scored! Johnny Lomax is over to score! St. Helens' Wembley dream is alive again! But there's still a huge kick to come. But now it's the Saints fans who can bob up and down with sheer delight. Well, come with the hour, come with the man. And my word, it has just been incessant pressure, hasn't it? And they're from that big tackle there, Wormsy did a great job, you know, playing the ball so quickly. And there were lead players out of the defence. That allowed them to get to the edge with a bit of comfort. And when they got to the edge, Wellsby serves Lomax, and he just pins his ear back. And that's sheer bloody-minded determination there. He wanted to score to keep his team in the Challenge Cup. Great try. Well, he's a champion, he's a champion through and through, and this game is never over. On Johnny Lomax's watches, every time he comes up with a big play, they need to go to Lomax or Wellsby, and it was done, the combination of them three. But you mentioned the kick before, uh, Woodsy. This one's even more important. This, this is massive. Tommy Makinson has St Helens' Wembley dreams on the end of his boot. Puts this over, we are likely be going into Golden Point, extra time. Misses, and surely it's Leeds turn, Lee's turn at Wembley for the first time in over half a century. Who dares look? Makinson, trying to steady the heartbeat. Go through the process. One last look at the target. This is the semi-final. He started it right. It stayed right. It's gone wide. And Lee, Lee, are 40 seconds away from the Wembley final. Well, you've got to feel for the fella, haven't you? They're absolutely through the roof with their emotion. Well, there's going to be 20 seconds of mayhem here after this yeah. kickoff. Let's go, come on. Yeah, it's, 
He'll, he'll stop the clock with the referee. Just to let you know, by the way, the clock doesn't marry on the screens yeah. with the match official. So when it counts to 80, it's not over. They've stopped the clock at 79.59. And the players don't realise. there'll realize. be a few more seconds to add on to that. St Helens might get a couple of plays here. They'll want to do it in one. They're in the mood to do it in one. There's the tackle. But the clock, the match clock, still goes. St Helens still have hope. They can still break hearts. Bounces into the hands of Hurrell. Hurrell puts it back now. Here comes Wellsby. Wellsby to Makinson. Makinson's chip over the top. Lamb throws it into the crowd. Lee have made history. Half a century of waiting. Father and son in raptures. Little Lee. Little Lee. You better believe it. They're going to Wembley Stadium. And this could be just about the biggest day in their history. What a performance. What a win. And what an incredible story in an incredible semi-final. Wow, that's all you can say, wow. We've been royally entertained by two teams, two sets of players absolutely desperate to get to Wembley. And it's Lee who's held on there. And they've just come through by the tiniest, tiniest, a missed goal kick, tiniest of margin. What a game of rugby league, what a semi-final. Oh, we've got to hear about the emotions on the field. We've got to hear those emotions on the field. We're going to go down there in just a second. Player of the match, by the way, before you go, quickly. Yeah, Lachlan Lamb, the Lachlan he created Lamb. the two tries, the two assists. Lachlan Lamb is the player of the match. His dad, Adrian Lamb, is the coach who's taken Lee back to Wembley. Let's get down there. I think we can go down there with John Wilkin, who's down on the field, to get some of that live reaction. John, over to you.